first explosion blew out the top part of a reactor containment building at the Fukushima number one nuclear power plant. This footage inside the building was taken during a regular inspection. The nuclear reactor is housed behind this robust wall. This is what a nuclear reactor looks like. The uranium inside the fuel rod inside the reactor undergoes nuclear fission. The rods emit heat, generating energy. Usually water cools them to maintain their temperature at 270 degrees Celsius. But if the cooling fails, the temperature could rise to over 1200 degrees. This temperature is hot enough to melt the fuel rods. When the earthquake hit, the first safety system to prevent a meltdown was activated. Control rods rose into the reactor to stop the nuclear fission. As planned, the reactor stopped operating. But the fuel rods were still hot. Water should have been circulated to cool them down. However, this didn't happen because of a power outage right after the quake. So the second safety system turned on. The emergency diesel power generator began spraying the rods with coolant. But an hour later, something unexpected happened. Without warning, the emergency generator stopped. Around this time, the tsunami, possibly as high as 10 meters, hit the power plant. Experts think this is what caused the generator to fail. Now, the third safety system started operating. It converts steam traveling through the pipes into water. It cools the rods, but the water level went down and the temperature continued to rise. All three safety measures had failed. <laughs> Professor Akira Omoto of the Japan Atomic Energy Commission was involved in construction of the Fukushima plants. He thinks the cooling water somehow leaked from the reactor. The reactor's coolants must have leaked somewhere in the building. We thought we had taken adequate precautions for a tsunami, but what happened was beyond our expectations. To forcibly cool the reactor, seawater had to be pumped into it and the containment vessel. Similar failures and a huge explosion also hit another reactor at the plant on Monday. Once again, nature has challenged man's best efforts. Until next earth-changing global catastrophe occurs, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear reactor containment breach power plant meltdown chain reaction disaster event remains gravest earthbound threat facing humanity. Daiichi Power Plant Radiological Threat Constituency Summary comprises following elements. 1. Reactor Core Containment Loss Mitigation Involving Three Separate Complete Core Meltdowns. 2. Special Hazard Attention Focus, Reactor No. 3 Possessing MOX Plutonium Content. 3. Localized Site Instability Threatening Adjacent Reactor Complex, Dany, Utilizing Four Reactor Core Units with Subsequent Fuel Rod Storage Pools and Common Storage Concentration Area. 4. Severe structural integrity situation involving reactor for spent fuel pool. 5. Additional spent fuel pool considerations for all subsequent reactor housing structures. 6. Common wet storage fuel pool containment stability for housing all newly migrated spent fuel pools. 7. Secondary fuel storage site stability, dry cask encasement storage permanence. 8. Continued salt water corrosion compromising zirconium cladding surrounding fuel rods. 9. Continued salt water contamination threatening Pacific Ocean viability. 10. Salt water filtration element containment, large heavily contaminated mineral filter storage. 11. Ongoing radiological nucleotide saturation eviscerating Japanese genetic heritage, risking nation and culture. 12. Continuing risk potentiality possible extinction level event scenario escalation. Fuel storage pool reactor 4, compromised building integrity continues against reinforcement efforts, fuel rod sequestration process scheduled beginning March 2014.
Comprising of six separate nuclear reactors Fukushima Daiichi plant complex utilizes two storage methods for housing spent fuel rods. Containment Zone 1 uses common wet pool design, already containing well over 1,000 tons spent fuel. TEPCO plants migrating spent fuel pools for all six reactors to common pool storage. Reactors 1 through 6 contain nearly 100 tons waste each, reactor 4 houses over twice this amount. Unit 3, Unit 4, their spent fuel pools contain especially hazardous MOX plutonium type materials. Unit 3, having suffered terminal coolant loss has melted down. Speculation only assumes corium location. Exposed Reactor 3 Corium contaminant with unique MOX plutonium signature detected in adjacent turbine rooms for Reactors 2 and 3 indicating exposed Corium as molten mass on basement floor. Second storage type, beyond common pool storage Daiichi power plant also houses dry cask type storage using corrosion resistant cladding dry containment vessels within housing structure, less vulnerable to failure than wet storage pools, TEPCO idealistically hopes converting newly migrated wet pool content into dry cask storage. However this process will take well over a decade to complete. Idealistic conditions cannot be assumed for seismically volatile region that Japan is. Additionally global perturbations caused by changing planetary influences, political, social, economic and meteorological instability only increase inevitable dilemma probability. TEPCO continues unabated committing crimes against humanity inflicting simultaneous suicidal global nucleotide radiological devastation. Domestically, expectation cannot be foisted upon Japanese ingenuity alone during inevitable multiple nuclear reactor power plant failure pending unforeseen exotic circumstances. Citizens living within Nihon, their majority public consensus opposes nuclear power strongly. Average people dislike using nuclear power. Bribery, extortion, threats, manipulation, harassment, promises, forfeiture and costly judicial litigation, these methods amongst many more. Hitachi, Tepco, GE, Toshiba, Westinghouse. Corporations use pathological predatory persistence employing any feasible possibility within grasp to control people, ultimately gaining power, subduing opposition, obtaining maximum profit, most important of all, destroying community and environment. <laughs>
できないんですよ。そうだ。中でも尿の検査については、早急にあの、えー、調査をお願いしたいと思います、えー、誰がどのように調査をするのかと,ことについて、ご回答いただきたいと思います。いや持ってくべきじゃないんですか、せっかく持ってきた、約束を守って持ってきたんだから、せっかく持ってきてくださったんだから、なんであなたたち、前、ね、尿を持ってきたら検査するって言ったんでしょ、違いますよ、ちょっとほら、持ってってください、もうダメだめだ、だめだ、だめだ、逃げちゃだめ、ここで逃げちゃだめですよ。人間として付き合ってください、我々と。ねえ、どこを見てるんですか、皆さん。かすぎ合わせきが大事なんですか、それとも、すくちばしとか大事なんですか。ねえ、ねえ、本当。ちょっと頼みますよ。現地対策問題、現象分現地対策問題、ちょっと、ちょっと。どうしてなんですか。ねえ、あなた、お子さんいないんですか。All day, we have heard the reassurances that the radiation now being found in some of the U.S. milk supply is minimal and poses no risk. So we spent this day answering some serious questions. Since the radiation in some form has been found in 20 states, exactly how much has been linked to the milk and how are the experts sure that it's safe? ABC's Abby Boudreau is at a lab in San Bernardino, California tonight. Abby. Diane, with radiation still leaking from the reactors in Japan, tonight here in California, there's growing concern about how that radiation is impacting our milk supply. This is the National Air and Radiation Environmental Laboratory in Montgomery, Alabama. This lab is the front line of defense where the government's been working around the clock to track radiation levels in milk produced all over the United States. That fresh milk could end up on your table within a few days. The levels of radioactive iodine detected in milk in Washington and California so far are minuscule. The government says 5,000 times lower than what the FDA considers a public health concern. And iodine breaks down quickly. Even if a quart of milk in your refrigerator contained trace amounts, it would deplete by half in just 